Hello, Ferdinand. How are you? I'm all right, all things considered. Thanks, Sam. How are you, mate? I'm not too bad. Yeah, like you say, all things considered. We're all at home. And, uh, it's become all... a sort of stock phrase for me. I keep hearing myself say, or, oh, you know, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all yeah, right. Yeah, as well. And do you know what? You know, there's the initial sort of coronavirus chat everyone has with everyone. So, oh, how's, yeah, ti- how, how's your time at home? What have you been doing yeah. to keep yourself occupied? How's the sourdough? You know, yeah. yeah. I'm really, but how many banana breads have you made? I'm so bored oh, of that look. chat. There's, and you know what? We're kind of, if, if that's the, if that's our biggest worry, that chat, we're doing all right, isn't it? And, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and if that's, that's the, thing. If that's the level like, that 2020's at, then. Yeah. That's the thing as well. Like I find people, people who are struggling to stay at home and socially distance, mm. and we're mm. moaning about that when there are literally people in this world who have been in a world war, and that's what I'm a bit like. <laughs> There's not many of them left, but yeah, yeah. yeah not I know. Many. I'm. I'm. Uh, I know. I was bouncing around, being like, oh, which room shall I sit in? It's like, dude, you've got more than one room to sit in. It's all right. Exactly. And of course, you know, doing these Zoom interviews, we all need to find new aesthetics behind us and, and, and mm. what, what, what looks Please better. Enjoy I've chosen my window frame today. Mm. Um, it's but, very um, flattering. Where are you? I, I'm in my girlfriend's uh, flat at the minute. So I've been self isolating there. So uh, we're, we're, we're whereabouts? In Cardiff. Mm, fab. Yes. What, what about Place yourself? Place where, where, where us. Englishmen are not allowed at the moment, right? Oh, no, no, no. Well, no. Yeah. I mean, we don't. No, I mean, you're not allowed anywhere. <laughs> no, exactly. Or just, I'm staying at home. Um, but Ferdinand, yeah. uh, we could chat all day about coronavirus, but um, I don't want to chat about that. You and probably don't. Lord knows, I want that. to. Yeah. You want to chat about Mank? Um, now the yeah. poster for Mank came out today, and just mm. looking at the poster, um, it, it's old school Hollywood, isn't it? Yeah, it really, it really is, but not in a sort of. Um, copy and paste way you know it'd be easy to do like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of old hollywood mm. um but there's the, the the level of detail that that david fincher works with is is kind of ridiculous so um it it doesn't feel like a cheap imitation it's it's absolutely the scale and um depth of those old hollywood productions in my opinion yeah, uh, yeah and the that... poster the poster is wonderful it is. It is. Is that kind of what drew you to the project? Um, this sort of not only working with David Fincher, but the um, incredible uh, old school Hollywood aesthetic. Is, is that what drew you to Mank? It, abs- I mean, absolutely. It, I think it's quite a surprising script for a for a Fincher movie. I mean, it, it shouldn't be because he's one of the greatest directors on the planet and he can make whatever film he wants. But but when I if you put the script in front of me without saying who was directing it and give me 100 guesses as to who. So I wouldn't have said David Fincher. Mm. Um, it's a totally different uh, sort of temperature to the to the other films he's made, which is you know a, a credit to him. But yeah, absolutely. I mean that that world is is one of the reasons why we're, I'm an actor. You know it, that it, it's it's one of the things that um, enchants you and excites you and and has an, a real air of magic. You know it's easy to to say, but it is the magic of the movies. It was a new world back then. So yeah, I mean, when you when you get lost in a script like that, it's absolutely thrilling, and um, and then of course you see you see David Fincher's name on it, and you just laugh and go, well, it'll be nice to audition for that. I mean, yeah, I can say I've auditioned for David Fincher, and then I'll move yeah. on with my life and not work for a year or something, and then and then you find you're you're on it, and you just got to enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ferdinand, um, so to somebody who has no idea what the film is all about, because purely mm. by coincidence, I, I, I sort mm. of came across the trailer um, uh, uh, whenever it came out a couple of weeks ago. And mm-hmm. I was, uh, you know, I, 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 I couldn't stop watching from the moment mm. that the, the trailer has the, you know, the following trailer and it's all sort of Hollywood style. So yeah. And really... they've they've made the, the Netflix International logo like one of the old RKO yeah, yeah, yeah. logos from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what is Mank all about? So Mank is, uh, Mank is short for Mankiewicz, Herman Mankiewicz, who was um, an incredibly gifted writer and um, an absolute shambles of a human being. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's played by Gary Oldman, who is an incredibly gifted actor and not an absolute shambles of a human being. (laughs) Um, uh, And um, the film covers the, the 10 years or so uh, leading up to the making of Citizen Kane, which yeah. which Herman Mankiewicz wrote uh, with Orson Welles. It's one of the great sort of contested credits. They they fought for years and years over who wrote the bulk of the film. It was never, I mean, there is still no real consensus. There'll be people watching this film going, well, this is Mankiewicz propaganda. It was all Welles and, you know. Um, 
but the important thing with this film is that it's it's that world seen through the eyes of Herman Mankiewicz, who is who is sort of imploding um, for all his creative genius and, and wonderful brain. He kept blowing his chances um, of being a happy, balanced. Um, hmm. Can you hear my dog howling in the background? I, I was going to say you could probably hear my cat <laughs> going to the toilet there, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh great! I've got I've got a puppy in in the back room who's protesting at having been ignored for three minutes. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so it's it's all seen through the eyes of 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 Mank. Um, so it's that world through his experience. So people aren't necessarily exactly as they were. They are they are as he saw them through this haze of of genius and resentment and booze and um, uh, self destruction. Mm -hmm. um, and how a lot of his experiences in those 10 years, basically his entire experience in those 10 years of getting so close to, to the new power machine that was Hollywood, which was intersecting with politics in a, in a brand new way. Um, he got so close to the sort of epicenter of that and blew it essentially. Mm. Um, so that fed a lot into the film, into Citizen Kane. So there's a lot of moments where if you are a massive Wells or Citizen Kane fan, you'll watch it and go, oh, I get, I get where that, what that influence is that. Yeah, but if yeah, you're yeah. not, and if you don't know the film, what it is, is uh, an incredible, um invitation into the 30s uh mm -hmm. in well in america it's, it's hollywood but it's america because hollywood kind of was america at that point really yeah, yeah I mean, of course in uh and the the power that they were starting to wield over american politics which is you know it's a good time for the film to be coming out and citizen kane is it in itself it is a film that is so beloved and and adored mm. by so many people like i remember studying it in uh, my english uh, class when i was in school so mm. uh, the fact that you're now creating something which is almost you know it, it, behind the scenes of citizen kane the build up to citizen yeah. kane was there a, yeah. a sense of pressure there um i i don't know if there's a sense of pressure in in terms of it being about kane yeah, because as I say, there's the there's the um, dramatic license that comes with it being through someone else's eyes. Um, but I I did feel a, a pressure, I guess a good word for it is responsibility, um, in in telling these stories that in some way at least did happen and playing these people that did exist. You know, Irving Felberg did exist, who who I play. So um, the pressure to not just present either a caricature or um, something which really contradicts who the essence of the person i can't pretend that i have the exact energy of irving Thalberg or you know but you can you can try to at least there's a responsibility to playing someone real it, it, who had a big part to play in events that did really happen Definitely. um but in terms of kane it, it's kind of what's interesting is you don't actually see the making of the film so mm -hmm. it's more like what you see is is the years that led to the film happening Mm -hmm. So we we're not we don't have the pressure of trying to remake Citizen Kane because if you do that you're screwed, <laughs> you know you can't you can't. Yeah, you can't, oh, I mean especially a to... film that is is so beloved. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pressure, I don't think, but responsibility, yeah. Tell me more about your character who who was a real person. <laughs> yeah, so Irving Thalberg um, was very much a real person. He was uh, known as the boy genius. Um, he was uh, a very, very young producer at MGM. He ran, he ran MGM with Lou B. Mayer. Mm -hmm. um, but he, the, the, the key to him was that he was, well, there are two keys. One is that he was, he was 19 when he took over Universal Pictures. Mm. Uh, and he was 23 when he um, produced Ben-Hur yeah. and, and founded MGM. So he was absolutely turbo. And he, for him, the, life was a ticking clock. He was born with a congenital heart defect um and was told he wouldn't make it to teenagehood and then was told he wouldn't make it to his 20s then was told he wouldn't make it to his 30s and so every sort of passing day um was a, a blessing for him mm. was a gift and and so he felt he didn't have the luxury of time uh which is a good lesson for us all i sit around going oh 32 now i should probably get started with my yeah. <laughs> um by the time he and this isn't well i mean it's giving away a little bit but it's history he, he died when he was 37. Mm. And and by the time he died, he produced four hundred films. Yeah. And he and he never had his name on them. So he was he are. was an he was an obsessive worker, 
Um, he was also in incredibly uh, right wing and a yes. sort of union smasher. Um, so he was not a pushover and a softy, which, you know, is is always a temptation to make your character just likable. But he was kind of amazing and kind of ice cold. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. How does one go about researching a character that has uh, already existed? Because well, you know, for... play, playing people who 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 exist and are real people <laughs> is is no stranger to your family. Um, you, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Your father, uh, Sir Ben yeah. Kingsley, who is a legend. Can I say? Ha, ha, you can ha, say. I, I can say. How is he? <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. He's just um, he got home yesterday. He was filming uh, the other side of the world. Hmm. Um, so he's got back, and as a technically vulnerable member of the community in his 70s he's now quarantining at home of so course. he's really well yeah but, he's got back but what's it like really playing a character who who really existed what sort of research do you have to do to, to to create that character i mean i think it depends on the project for me this one the the joy the, the joy of it was that most a lot of the research involved watching old films to see inside Great. the mind of, of uh, yeah, I know. I mean, what a chore that is to sit in front of your TV and watch Criterion Collection. It's bloody yeah, hard. Yeah. Um, and to watch those uh, old documentaries from the 80s about early Hollywood, because the documentaries that were made in the 80s just about had people who were there at the beginning, at, at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you're not yeah, long yeah, removed. Yeah. So these are the amazing stories of the people who were 80, 90 when they're being interviewed, going, oh, yeah, when I was 30 and we all moved to Hollywood and started making these. Uh, these movies so so that was a lot and then I read um, there are a few books about Irving but there's one incredible one that I spent a lot of time with by Mark Vieira called uh, Irving G. Thalberg Boy Wonder to Hollywood Legend or something like that mm -hmm. um, I should really have reminded myself what it was uh, <laughs> which is which is absolutely wonderful and, and is based on years of research and and then of course the gift of filming it in filming it in Hollywood so, you know, going to, I went to visit his house and um, uh, uh, Thalberg's house, which he had built next to Marion Davis's house, which was next to Louis B. Mayer's house, which, you know, uh, and, and being on the, the studios, which, although obviously they've been modernized, they've been changed, they are in the same places. And a lot of the buildings are the same mm. buildings that were, that were there. So when you're filming at, at Sony, what you're actually filming at is the old MGM and you're yeah, in the yeah. places that, you know, so actually a lot of the work, the work isn't done for you, but a lot of the imaginative work is just around you and you're in, you're in a movie about movies. So mm -hmm. it's, you're immersed in it. Yeah. So that's, that, that's where a lot of the, the preparation came in. Yeah. And that must've just really helped when, uh, creating uh we use that mm -hmm. term loosely mm -hmm. a character yeah. um but um finally uh ferdinand um and this is probably a hard question or, or not hard question why should somebody watch mank sum it up for us okay i for me um i think mank will appeal to people who um want uh, uh um well, there's an escape element to it. There's definitely an element of escapism into a, a world that was really finding its feet and is absolutely luscious to be in. So on, yeah. a, on a sort of surface level, it's just a joy to be in that world and to see these incredible wild creatures um, tell a great, sim on, on a simple level, a great story. Uh, on, a, on a level beneath that, on a deeper level, I think it's a, a film about um, power and mm. responsibility and... Uh, what we as um, people who love the arts and people who consume the arts, even if you have no interest in it professionally, you know, if we, we all want to consume movies and, and, and TV and theatre, um, it's a film about understanding the role that that can play in the bigger picture of the world and um, how the intersect between art and, uh, and politics isn't as... They're not as, as separate as we might like to think. And I don't think they ever really have been. Yes. So, and also, finally, um, Gary Oldman is, yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, Gary Oldman, full stop. I mean, Gary yeah. is just incredible and he's absolutely sensational in it. There's barely, there's barely a shot that he's not in. There's definitely not a scene that he's not in. Um, mm -hmm. And he doesn't miss a beat. He's, you can't take your eyes off him, even though I am in the film. You can't take your eyes off Gary. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Ferdinand, <laughs> thank you so much for chatting to me. Thank um, you. I Sam. wish you all the best. Um, and you I too, can't mate. wait to I watch hope Hank. Gilbert the dog didn't uh, didn't ruin that for you. Or, or <laughs> Daisy the cat. <laughs> oh, Daisy man, you messed yeah. everything up. No, lovely to chat to you, pal. Take thank care. Thank you very much, Ferdinand. All the best.